Welcome to Paris. My name is Bernard Prendergast and I'm very happy to be here with my colleagues Nina Wonderlijk and uh, Stefan von Baderleben to discuss breaking developments in the world of mitral and tricuspid valve intervention and particular advances in the notion of annular reduction therapy. Mitral and tricuspid valve procedures have seen significant progress in recent years and at this meeting we've been able to interrogate emerging data regarding the advances in this treatment area. Nina, tell us about the scale of the problem of mitral and tricuspid valve disease and the challenges it presents to clinicians. So if you look at this population, so we find that most of the patients with functional mitral regurgitation are, treat, are treated uh, medically. And uh, we also know that these patients are not doing very well, that the outcome is very poor. So if you look, for example, at the patient group, uh, with functional mitral regurgitation, and they have severe mitral regurgitation. So we find that these patients have a 50% mortality at three years. So this is really a big number. And uh, we also know if the patients are treated medically, um, they have a high risk uh, of failure on the long term. So um, if you follow the patients for at least five years, we'll see that 50% of the patients have a mortality um, during uh, this five year period of time. So it's indeed a big problem because we don't have anything to offer to the patients at the moment. Until very, very recently. Until very recently. A major unmet clinical need. And of course, mitral valve disease and tricuspid valve disease are uh, complex in their pathophysiology. And one of the main mechanisms is dilatation of the annulus. And Stefan, we now have uh, annular reduction therapy in our hands with CE mark devices. Can you tell us a little bit about the Edwards CardioBand device? The Edwards CardioBand device is a very safe device because it uses a transvascular, transvenous and transeptal approach to the mitral annulus. The um, implantation is stepped up in four steps. First, a venous um, puncture in the femoral vein. You move up with a um, sheath to the transeptum, do a transeptal puncture that is pre-planned both by echocardiography and CT. After gaining access to the left atrium, you move over a 24 French flexible sheath, and within that sheath, there is a delivery system and an implant catheter that can be freely steered to all positions of the mitral ring, starting in the P1 segment, near the aortic root, and near the left atrial appendage. And you use the muscle, actually, at the hinge point of the mitral valve to fix 14 to 17 anchors and a flexible band that can later be changed by about 3.5 to 5.5 centimeters in order to achieve a remodeling of the mitral valve annulus. And Nina, which patients therefore would be suitable for such a procedure? We are looking primarily for patients with functional mitral regurgitation, which means they have annular dilation. So this is the, the uh, patient group we focus on. And uh, we typically find two kinds of patients. So we have the patients who have left ventricular disease and uh, left ventricular remodeling. Um, this usually leads to annular dilation, but also to some kind and some amount of tethering of the leaflets. Um, and we also have the patients who have just pure uh, left atrial dilation, and uh, this patient group mainly leads to annular dilation. So we find the patients usually in both groups. Uh, the ideal candidate would be maybe the patients with the left atrial dilation, but uh, in most of the cases, if we see severe mitral regurgitation, so we have at least some amount of tethering in these patients. So a relatively broad range of indications and, and with relatively Definitely. few exclusion criteria, which is very encouraging indeed. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about the results that we've been hearing at this meeting. At this meeting, we have heard an update on the interim result of the CEMAC trial uh, for the cardioband in the mitral position and we have just learned about the two-year data uh, which are quite interesting in a group of 61 patients in the CE Mark trial. In the updated uh, analysis at two years we have seen that there was a freedom of up to 95 percent from MR grade 2 plus uh, in this patient population which was sustained not only at one years but now also at two years which is a very promising result Let's turn to the tricuspid valve now, Stefan. Um, clearly, the mitral and tricuspid valves have some similarities. They're both atrioventricular valves, but clearly the technical approach to the, uh, the procedure will be different on the right side of the heart. There is a more limited uh, information, and it was once the forgotten valve, which is now uh, highlighted by the cardiologist and respected by the cardiologist. 
So the first step is that we can omit one step of the mitral procedure. This is a transeptal puncture. You can immediately, by a venous femoral puncture, reach uh, this valve uh, with the 24 French sheath. So the cardioband uh, mitral was simply mirrored uh, to the other side. So if one system goes clockwise, the other system goes counterclockwise. And where we typically start is again at the coronary ostium. And it is not the circumflex, but the right coronary artery that is surrounding the tricuspic annulus. So what we do is that typically we use a coronary catheter and we place a wire into the right coronary artery, which marks us nicely the surroundings of the tricuspic annulus. And this is helpful not only to use echocardiography, but also fluoroscopy to guide this procedure. The next step is to implant also a CT and echo preplant ring from the anterior leaflet of the tricuspic valve to the posterior uh, leaflet of the tricuspic valve and the coronary sinus ostium. As we know, that the dilatation of the tricuspic ring takes place only at the free wall, which is at the site of the interior and the posterior leaflet. So the big news is that uh, the cardioband tricuspic actually is the first percutaneous CE mark device to treat the tricuspic valve, which is a huge innovation given the high mortality of isolated tricuspic repair in classic heart surgery, which is around 10 to 11 percent intra-hospital. Um, so the uh, iteration of the six-month results showed a um, consistent annular reduction in the septolateral diameter of approximately 16 percent. They also showed a reduction of 48 percent of the ROA derived by PISA methods and also a 27 percent reduction in the vena contractor in this mostly rhombus-shaped uh, irregular regurgitations that we see in this valve. And as Rebecca Hahn pointed it out also at this meeting, we may need a larger range of uh, severity uh, gradings, especially in the tricuspic space, because the vena contractor can range in severe disease from about seven millimeters to 20 millimeters. And this is of course something we now call also torrential. What we also have seen is that these patients benefit. They benefit in the reduction of their edema status and they experience a variable increase in stroke volume, which we also know from congenital heart disease, both in the pulmonary as well as in the tricuspic field, that typically the stroke rate, stroke volume on the left-hand side because of better filling gets up by four to 15%, which is an important thing. As the uh, cardioband tricuspic is a mirrored option um, with a similar implant technique, uh, once you have learned uh, mitral implantations and if you take use uh, of a coronary wire in the right coronary artery, it's rather easy to transvert these informations and this experience uh, into the tricuspic field and successfully implant this catheter at a high implantation rate. So there you have it, a major unmet clinical need, a large volume of patients with mitral and tricuspid valve disease who currently have minimal treatment options. An emerging data for the Edwards Cardioband device achieving mitral annular reduction treatment and reconstruction of the valve, which is associated with excellent clinical outcomes sustained at follow-up, offering new treatment options for our patients. Thank you for joining us.